we limit ourselves and it's only us. There's nobody else that's doing it to you. You've chosen to adopt those beliefs. And once you push yourself outside of that comfort zone, what becomes possible is absolutely miraculous. What is this limiting belief in my case that I'm not a good person? What does it cost me in my past to think this way? What is it costing me in this present moment to think that I'm not a good person? And here's the kicker. If I don't evolve this, if I don't get deliberate, what is it going to cost me in the future to continue to think that I'm not a good person? And the law of attraction is one that works like this. You get back from the universe, from the world, what it is that you put out there in the world. And if you're putting out there into the world that I am not worthy of attracting something beautiful into my life, that the universe will respond back to you with exactly that message. If I'm lying to you about who I am, or I'm lying to you about whatever, there's no starting point. There's a false reality. You have to create the real reality. It would be better for you to act towards an end that makes everything that's good better. That that's the best way to live, to make everything that's good better. And maybe to restrict the development of everything that's malevolent and evil within yourself and in the broader world insofar as you're able to do that. And so I think that's an expression of love is that because when you love something, you care for it. And the proper attitude towards being, I think, is care. The best thing about life is tomorrow never happens. Yes? If you just know how to deal with what's now, you know how to deal with your entire life. This moment, if you know how to manage your thought, your emotion and your body, rest, drama outside happens. But if this is like this, this will be joyful and wonderful no matter what's the drama around you. Yes? Oh, what if this happens? What if that happens? Yes, all those things can happen. But, you came here to experience life, not to avoid life, isn't it? This is about being able to think like a champion. Know what goes on in their heads. Understand how you can relate it to your business and whatever you do to take yourself to the next level. And I'll tell you, if you fight with all you have, more often than not, you won't go down at all. You will win. But you have to make that attitude a part of your everyday life. Do the extra repetition. Run the extra mile. Go the extra round. Make the right choices. Give the full measure. Make yourself stronger. Every day, comfort you versus growth you are in a fight. There's a war going on inside you. Comfort you versus growth you. Every day, there's a fight, there's a battle, there's a war going on. And you need to decide who's going to win the fight. It's a daily thing. And the more growth you wins against comfort you, the more you start to grow, the more you start to hit your goals, the more you start to have an impact, the more you start to love yourself. It's painful to understand how much of what you're doing isn't productive. So I'll give you an example. So. I've done this a couple of times with classrooms full of students. Usually when I'm lecturing about career development, say, okay, um, how much time do you waste? So then I, I get the class to vote. How many of you waste uh, 10 hours a day? It's like 10% of the kids will put up their hands. And it's interesting because I don't define what constitutes waste. I just ask the question. So they're diagnosing themselves, right? right? I'm not saying you're wasting 10 hours a day. I'm just asking. It's like, given your own attitude, how much time are you wasting? 10 hours a day, it's like 10% of the people put up their hands. Well, when you get to like six hours a day, 80% of the people put up their hands. So then we do the arithmetic. It's like, because I like doing arithmetic with people. People hate arithmetic, but I like doing it. It's like, okay, six hours a day, it's 42 hours a week. So let's call that a work week, 40 hours a week. So so that's that's a work week. Let's say, what's your time worth? You're a university student. Well, it's certainly worth minimum wage, because obviously, but it's worth way more than that because if you spend a productive hour when you're 20, then you gain the benefits of that hour for the rest of your life. So there's the compounding effect of time spent when you're young. So I say, well, let's assume your time's worth 50 bucks an hour, which I think is an underestimate, but whatever, let's call it 50. We can call it 25, but we'll call it 50. If that's $2,000 a week, you're wasted. It's $100,000 a year. 
It's like, how much better would your life be if you weren't wasting $100,000 a year? It's like, what is that over 40 years? $4 million. It's like, you're rich. You don't even know it. Quit wasting time. By your own definition. It's like people shake their heads. Well, I never thought about it that way. It's like, yeah, think about it that way. Don't waste your damn life. I know I'm, I, I'm a weak man. I know that I have sinned. I know that I am not perfect. But if I could have a person who's so much wiser than me, if I could look out into the future and my highest, best, strongest, happiest, boldest self could step in this situation, how would my better self advise me now? And you always find that your better self will say, calm down. It's not that big of a deal in the bigger picture. You're stronger than you know. Believe in your ability to figure this out. Take a breath. Take a couple breaths. Know that you could make the situation awful and make yourself feel bad, but that's your choice. Your highest self would tell you, you know what? Handle this well so you can respect yourself later. Your best self would say, handle yourself well now just to prove that you can. Your best self would say, you know what? If you handle yourself now, you have fewer regrets later. Your best self would say, you know what? Instead of being angry, try to be compassionate. Because from compassion and love comes a greater power to influence than you'll ever have as an angry little child. Oof, your older self, they'd, they'd tell you, they'd learn you. <laughs> they'd give you the messages that you needed to hurt. What would you do as your highest self? I like my trigger for myself is when I feel those negative emotions, I ask a very specific question. My question is, if I was acting as my highest self now, what would be my next right action of integrity? Coming from a place where I want to be happy as a human being, how would I reply to this? And that changes the game. The questions we ask ourselves in moments of conflict dictate the answers and the way in which we behave. And so I say to you, Take a beat, ask the questions, wonder why you're so upset, and let it go. Ask, what would my highest self do in the situation? Removing distractions is no small matter in our current culture, but it's critical. How do you do it? First, by maintaining the discipline of practicing your priorities. Don't do easy things first, or hard things first, or urgent things first. Do first things first. The activities that give you the highest return in that way, you keep the distractions to a minimum. Second, insulate yourself from distractions. I've found that I need blocks of time to think without interruption. I've mastered the art of making myself unavailable when necessary and going off to my thinking place so that I can work without interruptions. Because of my responsibilities, I am always aware of the tension between my need to remain accessible to others as a leader and my need to withdraw from them to think. The best way to resolve the tension is to understand the value of both activities. Walking slowly through the crowd allows me to connect with people and know their needs. Withdrawing from the crowd allows me to think of ways to add value to them. My advice to you is to place value on and give attention to both. If you naturally withdraw, then make sure to get out among people more often. If you're always on the go and rarely withdraw for thinking time, then remove yourself periodically so that you can unleash the potential of focused thinking. And wherever you are, be there. Once you have a place to think, you need the time to think. Because of the fast pace of our culture, people tend to multitask. But that's not always a good idea. Switching from task to task can cost you up to 40% efficiency. According to researchers, if you're trying to accomplish many things at the same time, you'll get more done by focusing on one task at a time, not by switching constantly from one task to another. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great transcendental thinker, believed concentration is the secret of strength in politics, in war, in trade, in short, in all management of human affairs. To help me concentrate on the things that matter, I work to keep important items before me. One way is to ask my assistant to keep bringing it up, asking me about it, giving me additional information in reference to it. 
I'll also keep a file or a page on my desk so that I see it every day as I work. That strategy has successfully helped me for 30 years to stimulate and sharpen ideas. If you've never done it, I recommend that you try it. Take a good look at yourself from time to time to see whether you are actually making progress. That is the most accurate measure of whether you are making the best use of focused thinking. Ask yourself, am I seeing a return for my investment of focused thinking time? Is what I am doing getting me closer to my goals? Am I headed in a direction that helps me to fulfill my commitments, maintain my priorities, and realize my dreams?